Hi, I'm Jennifer Branch. Today I saw my son reading to my dog and I had to paint a portrait of it. So here's a portrait of a boy and his dog. Happy painting. I start out most portraits with a background wash of azo yellow and thalo green. Just a very pale wash in the shadows and that way I know where I'm going. Next, I go in with some ultramarine blue. I want some slight graininess, but enough transparency that I don't get the chalky look like cobalt blue might give me. And in portraits, you don't want staining because you never know when you might have to pull something out. And I, I do want those deep darks. So ultramarine blue this time. That'll vary a lot more than my phthalo green azo yellow mix. Now, if I'm in doubt about where to paint, I always, always will leave it out. It's better to wait and see and you know what you want to do. I'm just loosely going around all the shadows again. And you want to use a fairly big brush. This is a number 14 round. Um, because there's some detail, but you don't want fussy detail at early stages of a portrait. You want to just rough it in. This is sketching. I would consider this one a sketch because this is the first time I've painted this portrait. And usually, really my difference between a finished portrait and a little sketch is that I've painted the portrait a couple times and when you've painted something a couple times you leave out strokes every time because you know exactly where you're going there's no hesitation and the first time you paint something it's a sketch there's a little bit of hesitation and you're just playing around with it my dog was looking at me like I had gone crazy taking pictures he was just peacefully sitting in the sun listening to Edwin Reed, and here I am snapping photos. And mistakes happen in watercolor. I get a little bit of color on Edwin's leg there. And I'll show you what you do in a second. We don't worry about things like that because watercolor, you're making the most of the accidents that happen. The deep ultramarine blue, I have a tiny touch of maroon perlin mixed in with it. Okay, so here I just get a little bit of clean water and I blot it. And that's enough. That's all it needs. You don't necessarily want a really crisp edge there anyways because that would be the strongest light and dark in the entire painting. So your attention would be drawn to that knee or calf. Now I use clean water and varying degrees and a little bit of dry brush. I'm really just very monotone right now. Um, just weighing the lights and the darks. A little bit of strong darks. I'm not going to have much detail in my dog because, well, he pretty much is a blur of black against the light of the window right now. Um, he's got some black, some white markings, but it's pretty much black and white dog. Um, and let me tell you, it's really hard to paint black eyes on a black and white dog. You really can't see anything. Now, look, this is going back in with a slightly heavier wash, a little bit more paint. And that looks really dark, but trust me, in a couple washes, it's not going to look all that dark. Tracing around his ear, because the ear is kind of catching the light against the dark sofa. And the problem with portraits is 
you're trying to look like a specific person. It's, it's really the same problem with buildings. If you're just doing a random house or something, who cares whether there's three windows up top or two? Um, but if you're trying to do a specific house, then you would definitely want to know whether there are two or three windows. Same thing with a person. You want to know, is their face long? Is it wide? Um, how much does their ear stick out? How narrow is the space between their eyes? What do you, what's the person look like? Um, you don't want to paint just a random stranger when you're trying to paint a specific person. I still am using the ultramarine with a tiny dash of maroon parallel in it. I'm using twin rocker paper because, well, I'm planning on keeping this painting or sketch and I love having these little six by eight sketches uh, in my hall of my kids, my life, just nice memories. It's my wall of photos, <laughs> except it's paintings. Now I'm wearing some little bits of highlights and uh, the hair, because it, it's uneven. Hair is in kind of long clumps, so I'm going to show that. Well, with the straight hair, it's in long clumps. It can be in like clumps of curls or all sorts of things, but it usually kind of clumps together. So you're going to show some value change on that. Now notice how that place where I had my oops, I went over the leg, doesn't really show up anymore. It just shows up as a little bit of a blur there. That was long enough for it to dry. I love painting dogs' paws. They're just, they're so cute. All the little fur sticking out in all directions, the unexpected little touches of pink. I use my fingers a lot when painting fur or hair or, or anything. There's no better tool than your hands. The paintbrush is just supposed to be an extension of your hands. Now I've let it dry for a minute. I'm going in with some quinacridone gold and I'll add a tiny touch of quinacridone red to it. The maroon perlin is a dark bluey red, and I'm wanting a bluey red, but lighter, more transparent. The skin has that little glow to it. Human feet are just as much fun as dog feet to paint. Little tiny details, translucent skin, gorgeous. Unexpected touches of pink. Just little drops of the quinacridone red in there, where it was just a pale touch before, but little drops of the quinacridone red it will give me that color. And trust me, this will dry a lot lighter than it's going on. So I'm wearing the shadows um, behind him. He's kind of got his feet propped up weird and all that. And I just went to blur into there's some deep shadows he's sitting down. It's very un unimportant part of the painting. It's just shadow. Now, the thing is, notice if, if I had painted this a couple times, then instead of two strokes there, I'm making one. It becomes automatic. The more times you paint something, really the better you're going to paint it. But if all you're looking for is a little sketch, all you have to do is paint it once. Now, hair in portraits, if you can, on the first wash especially, I did with the underlayer of the Thalo Green and Azo Yellow and the Ultramarine, but even the first skin tone, if at all possible with the hair color, sometimes you can't if it's white, um, 
then blur the skin color in the skin in the first light wash. It's going to make it look less painted on, like they're wearing a wig. Just blur that line. You can always get it back by adding a couple shadows, but you can't you can't blur it as easily afterwards. That needs to be done in the initial layer or two. And notice that I'm touching a little bit lighter on the um, shadow side, actually. And you're going to get deeper, darker shadows on the, um, on the light side the big contrast is between the light and the dark and while the shadow side may be very dark it's all going to kind of blur into the background and not be distinguishable so I've blurred the shadows out there they don't end and I'm wearing a delicate touch here so I'm just going back with a little bit of water but I don't want to lose those highlights so you gotta do be kind of tricky and slow take your time but work fast enough that the paint doesn't dry. You want it to all blur together. Human hands are pretty interesting too. It's all about the unexpected detail and little dashes of pink. My son is so proud that he's learned to read and he is learning, he is reading everything. And our dog, he will read to him for hours. They'll just sit there curled up with books. It's wonderful. I have a very patient dog and a very good reader for his son. <laughs> so here's... Now a little touch of um, the maroon parallel in there, just a little bit. It's still got some ultramarine blue in there, and adding the maroon parallel, it gives it that deep purple. Still not done though. I mean, that kind of framed it where I know where things go, but uh, what I'm planning on is I know that I want a my living room where this is is dark brown and there you go that's what really makes the feet stand out because they're white paws white paws black dog and I have to have that background to make the my son's hair stand out to make the paws stand out the window is um, a light source I was wondering whether I would need to paint that green just to it was just a blur of white when I was taking photos, I always take photos when you are, no matter if you're sketching live or not, take a photo if it's a kid or an animal because they will move. Um, you can start out sketching live, but plan on ending up with the photo. But um, I wasn't sure if I would have to paint it uh, light green for the window to make it stand out, but I really like the contrast there. So this is mostly, uh, you notice that my basic skin mix is quinacridone red and quinacridone gold. And I shift it. Sometimes there's a little bit more quin red, sometimes a little bit more quin gold. Now, see, I told you the hair and the um, face were painted with the same color. And that's another really dry brush without actually using a brush use my fingers. If you just want to kind of skim it, that really is the best way to do it. If you're just looking to hit the very surface. Now I'm blurring part of the background into his hair, which he has light brown hair, dark brown room so that works pretty well but I do it whether 
the room was bright green or brown. You want your subjects to be part of their surroundings. You want lost and found edges. That's what makes a portrait instead of a photograph. Photographs are great, no problems with photographs, but if you're doing a portrait, then lost and found edges, you're not looking for a photo realistic, unless you are, I guess, in which case I think you might as well take a photo. <laughs> it's much harder to figure out where to lose those edges. It's it's so easy to have every single edge in a portrait or any kind of painting very distinct because you see the object and you're painting it and you forget that at the shadows it completely blurs. And then some place like this where it's the um the eyebrows and the eyelashes, that's that's so hard to know where to blur. Now I've lost a little bit too much of the ear, it's a little bit too small, but I can go back and pull some of that out. I'll have a later lesson on how to pull little areas out, um, how to fix mistakes. Because while most mistakes end up being wonderful, you never know when there's one that you might want to get rid of. I always think of watercolor as a happy accident waiting to happen. That um, shin bone there, it's terrific to have it just a little rough and, and all that. A little bit of detail on the toes. And I've lost a little of the highlight on the big toe. I'm going to need to go back and probably add a little bit of gouache for that. Don't be afraid of gouache. Just keep it to the end because you don't want to destroy the transparency of everything else. Now I love using a rigger or a liner for tiny tiny details. That's my favorite brush. Um, it leaves a little bit of unevenness to it. Oh and I get the pink paws. But you have enough control. You can scoot up on it, you can pull back on it, and you have just enough control where it doesn't look too forced. I mean, there's, there's just something about painting the little details, little pink toes, dogs, people. Don't overpaint the mouth. Um, you don't want to paint every single little bit of it. It's kind of a trick to know what to blur and what to do, but in, in when in doubt, just blur it. You don't want too harsh edges on a mouth. And you definitely don't want too much harsh edges on a nostril. You don't want to feel like you're just looking up someone's nose. And since I did this... Uh, the photos for this at a slight angle from down, that's definitely a concern. So just kind of blur it. There's a shadow, a little bit of pink. See how there's little bits on the cheek that just make all the difference. A little bit around the eye where that reflects, a little bit on the cheek. Um, that's all you need. You just need a suggestion. Notice, uh, for instance, that um, my dog's eyes, you don't notice that the eyes really aren't there. Um, I'm going to pull them out a tiny bit, but mostly I just went dark enough where you see eye sockets more than the eyes. A little bit more shadow because the face was looking too flat. It wasn't curving around like I needed it to do. So know where those bones are. Um, practice drawing some people. Know where the bones are. If you don't know the bones, then it's very hard to paint a person. It's just like if you don't know what a basic window or door should 
look like, then it's very hard to paint a door, a house. A little bit more detail in the toes. Just a bit. That, that um, nice bright quinrad just makes the whole thing kind of glow where the light's hitting it at the edge. I'm pulling that out a little bit and then a little bit of um, texture for the page edges. Don't want too much. That's an area that could be distracting. I was titling this one Reading Lessons. <laughs> I think my son thinks that if he reads to his dog enough, he'll learn how to read. He pulls his finger along and everything so Ranger can follow along with him. Just a little bit of suggestion, rounding the body more. See how you want just layer upon layer. Very pale, very, very simple. It's better to build up a portrait, especially a child's portrait, in many, many layers. I hope you've enjoyed this video. For more information on painting portraits, please go to my website at paintingportracolor.com. Happy painting! <laughs>